Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed we do. It is a jam-packed day. We have two different sets of panelists for you, so get excited about that. We also have Medea Benjamin. She's, of course, the co-founder of Code Pink. She's going to talk about both her hopes and her fears with the incoming Biden administration, the now present Biden administration. And we have David Sirota on. Um, he picked up on this really fascinating yeah, thing. Right. Glenn Kessler, I love it. infamous fact checker at The Washington Post, did this whole thing giving Bernie Sanders three Pinocchios for claiming that Trump's tax cuts overwhelmingly benefited the rich and corporation. Um, worth noting that The Washington Post owned by the richest man in the right. on the planet right. who happened to Apparently benefit a lot the, from those tax cuts. We're the only people in Washington who will even acknowledge Just a, I'm sure it's just yeah. a coincidence. Yeah. Nothing to see here whatsoever. Whatever. Okay, <laughs> speaking of Bernie, uh, I know you've got some thoughts, so what is that? Indeed. San Francisco Chronicle published quite the op-ed that we just didn't want you guys to miss. You'll recall at inauguration, Bernie Sanders got a lot of attention and was memefied and all of that for his coat and his mittens and the way that he was just sitting there. Well, this person had quite a take on that uh, in an op-ed titled San Francisco High School Students Get a Lesson in Subtle White Privilege. The school teacher writes, Senator Sanders is no white supremacist insurrectionist, but he manifests privilege, white privilege, male privilege, and class privilege in ways that my students could see and feel. And again, Sagar, recall what this is all about. Bernie Sanders literally sitting there in a coat and mittens. And by the way, just to add one more thing into this, this is the same coat because I think I think he's documented as having two coats now. Uh -huh. um, but this is the same coat that he was attacked for being too fancy and too expensive. So now this op-ed attacks it for not being fancy enough to meet whatever her standards of dress and decorum but were. But that's what I don't understand. We, that's what I don't get. Look, I tried. I read this thing. I was like, okay, what is the argument here? Is that he dressed down, and so that is an exhibit of white privilege? Whereas, like, <laughs> it. Does, I mean, if you're going to dress in a certain way that reflects the class interests of poor people, wouldn't you want to dress down? So I'm like, okay, and then those people are disproportionately people. So once again, I'm like, I just don't understand. Oh, look, this is, it's like buzz, what is it whenever you fill it? Mad Libs. Mm. It's like basically like white privilege Mad Libs that these people <laughs> crank out. It's unbelievable. I, like I said, I read through the whole thing. I cannot even comprehend what she is saying. That has how dumb this entire article is. Of course, it was the actually the most read thing on the Chronicle's website, so the outrage clips I mean, were. I, um, I hate Reddit, for sure. Yeah, everyone did, right? The real question uh, you should be asking is, yeah. isn't this piece a little bit anti-Semitic? That's right. Is that, that the right way well, to do Am I doing I mean, this right? That's Exactly. It's like, <laughs> well, by forcing me to click on it, aren't you taking my like forced labor? Like, I can, look, I can do this. <laughs> All day That's long like with you one. morons. But <laughs> well, then, I don't here's want the other to. thing. Here's yeah. the other thing. Is like, first of all, I mean, people just something about him with a certain group, mm -hmm. they lose their minds. I mean, they really do have this sort of like Bernie derangement yes. syndrome. But here's the other thing. When Bernie went viral, I should have pulled this clip and the memes were ever and everyone's loving it and going crazy and like having fun with it, putting him in different scenes and whatever. What did he do? He immediately got t-shirts made and sweatshirts made that he could sell yeah. to benefit Meals on Wheels in two Vermont. Million, two million dollars. And yeah. when he got asked about it on CNN, and this is the clip that I should have pulled, uh, uh -huh. within five seconds of getting asked the question, he's pivoted to meals for seniors and raising money to help the underprivileged. Like, the idea that, you know, he's an example of privilege is absurd. And I, I really think that the... I really think, especially when he's just sitting there in his mittens, like yep. in his recycled sweater mittens too, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, I really think the fact that this same coat has led to polar opposite takes, both of them, you know, trying to smear him for wearing a coat is very telling about the way that the media and the way that a lot of people respond to him. A hundred percent. And yeah, it's just truly mystifying. Like, I do not know where they even get this stuff from. But, and yeah, the only thing you could say is like, it reminds me of those articles that would come out after Trump got elected, of someone being like, I haven't worked out in seven months and it's because of Donald Trump. I'm like, or maybe you're just lazy. <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> like, funny. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That was a whole pattern for a oh, while. Oh, yeah. Or it was like women cutting their hair short because of Trump. I was like, what? Like, this is completely insane. The, I mean, the other like, thing here is yeah. like, 
we have a few big problems happening in the country mm -hmm. right now, you know, we kind of got this pandemic thing, thousands of people dying literally every day, yeah. super flawed and slowed vaccine rollout, massive inequality, all of these climate crisis, all of these major issues, and yet this is what you choose to give your op-ed page over to. Anyway, there you go. More rising for you after this.